Hello, I am Tariq Osman, and this broadcast is about the novel The Parisian by Isabel Hamad. It is not common that one of the most talked about and reviewed books in one year, 2019, is about an Arab man and a set of questions that revolve around modern Arab history. The first question here concerns a duality about the place. The novel takes place in Paris, France, and Palestine in the early 20th century. The place is crucial here because the place in Hamad's tapestry is the context in which the character's thinking unfolds. And this thinking of the main character is what the novel is about. The first place, Paris or France in general, is where the main character, that young Palestinian man, comes of age, if you'd like, mentally, emotionally and intellectually. To a large extent, during and through his experiences in France, this young man moves out of mental boyhood and enters manhood. As always, there is a father figure. Someone our young man here looks up to. And of course, there is a young woman with whom our main character falls in love. But soon he realizes that neither relationships is actually as he had thought of them. Neither was actually true. I will not go into details here for those intending to read the novel, but the key point is that the main character gets to discover something about a higher form of knowledge represented in the older man, and a higher form of feelings, and not just desires, that he feels through his love for the young woman. But then he comes to see that what he had envisioned was not true. And here we have another duality, a more subtle one. One between what the main character thought and what actually transpired. And another between what he thought was not true versus what actually he did learn. In other words, our main character here thought he was deceived that he had lost these two important relationships. But he did gain a lot. He did learn a lot. In a way, the two relationships, even if they did not turn out the way he had wanted them to, actually were a form of initiation for our main character. Hence, the idea of his moving out of boyhood into manhood. But then, almost exactly when that happens, when the main character evolves and grows, he leaves France and returns to Palestine. And so we, the readers, find ourselves with the main character in the second place, Palestine. It is certain that Isabel Hamad, the author of this interesting novel, contrasts the places. Clearly not just in terms of topography, architecture, or even the feel of the places, but crucially in terms of the people. And this brings us to the core of that duality of the place I referred to at the beginning. That core is actually about the duality between the thinking of the people in the two places, the forms of expressing this thinking, general statements that ordinary characters in these societies say in the novel, and in general how the author chose to portray the people in France versus those in Palestine. Isabel Hamad has received quite a lot of criticism in that. She made her main character, that young man, always on the learning side, always owed by France, always almost infatuated by France. Which is normal, actually, in many Arab novels that had similar settings. Perhaps the work of Taha Hussein, 
and Tawfiq al-Hakim in Egypt in the period from the 1940s to the 1960s are good examples here. But what many critics have picked up on Isabel Hamad was contrasting the sophistication of the people of France that she portrayed in her novel with almost always some sort of simplicity of the people in early 20th century Palestine. And so, whereas our main character was always on a learning mode, always growing in Paris, we see him in an internal turmoil while he was back home. Turmoil because he, back home, effectively sees, lives in, and feels a society that he does not belong to. A society that he feels he does not belong to. And the impression that jumps out of the novel is that he does not belong because he has learned he has grown in Paris. This theme indeed could be picked on in the Parisian. But I think it will be unfair to the author to cast a judgment on her intentions, on whether there was a decisive line of thinking she drove throughout her novel. Yet I think what is important is the idea that there is a duality on the state of maturity between Europe and the Arab world at that time. Maturity here does not mean economic, industrial, or political development, but the maturity of thinking, especially of thinking about one's own life, one's own internal life. And so, irrespective of whether one likes or dislikes where Isabel Hamad stands on this, the point itself of delving into one's internal life through looking at how one's feel about certain social modes, ways of living, certain traditions and ways of thinking, this clear theme in this novel is worthy of time and reflection. This takes us to another interesting duality, perhaps a subtle one in the Parisian, that between love and rage. The belonging that our main character here feels in France and to France, as he was learning, growing, going through some sort of mental and emotional initiation, is contrasted by the rage that slowly builds up in him when he returns and lives in Palestine at that time. The word rage is intentional. For initially, we see our main character surprised at the rage that others round him have rage against the British who at the time were occupying Palestine, officially under the British mandate, but also rage at social changes. For example, new trends in education, women's rights, generally trends of modernization, slowly coming to the Arab society in the early 20th century. He feels rage about some of these things around him, within people he interacts with, Again, some critics picked up on Isabel Hamad here, accusing her of portraying the Arab society as highly resistant to development. But to me, what is interesting here is how that external rage that the main character sees and feels around him finds itself to the insides of the main character. In a way, that rage gets inside our young man here and gradually becomes some sort of disinitiation. I do not know if it's a correct term, but the point is that this rage robs the main character of the growth that he gained, he had gained in Paris, takes away from him that he had learned in his Paris initiation. This circle of gaining and then losing knowledge, primarily knowledge of one's self, is an intriguing theme. 
because in the movement of the main character between the two places and in his interactions with different peoples in the two places, we see him ascending a ladder of knowledge, that quasi-initiation out of boyhood into manhood, out of ignorance of one's self, into the beginning of getting to understand one's self. Only after that, to begin to lose that knowledge, to begin to descend down away from that knowledge, and to begin to lose it to anger, to submission to the wants and delusions, and indeed rages of the self. So, for those who will read the novel, and again it is one of the most successful in 2019, I think in addition to the language, to the love story in the novel, to the social observations, and of course, to the subtle politics in it. It is important to reflect on these dualities scattered in the novel, and which perhaps carry the deeper meaning of this work of art.